Spaghetti Mom donates five dollars, says good luck to the one and only Mr. Tiny Tune. Proud to see one of the best Italian speedrunners running at AGDQ. C Lord donates seventy-five dollars. Third time watching, first time donating. You guys do an amazing job. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Greetings from Germany. Anonymous donates five dollars. First time donating. Thanks for all those awesome speed runs. Good luck and kill the cancer, not animals. Tadichi donates $75, long time viewer, first time donator. It's the first time I actually have enough money to help this awesome cause. You guys are amazing. Greetings from Germany. P.S. Save those lovely animals. Luke Gardner donates $100. Always love the GDQ events. Big thanks to all the tech and behind the scenes guys making this all possible. You guys don't get enough love. Pooty McSpooty donates $10. Long time viewer, first time donator. Love the work you do. I hope this little bit will help save the rebellion, save the dream, kill the animals. The Strict Nine donates $75. Always love GDQ events when they come around, and this one has been one of the best I've seen. Donating towards the genocide boss because I feel like having a bad time. There are a couple Undertale and uh, Super Metroid incentives to donate towards, save, kill the animals, shun, hug the boss. Keep those in mind as the donations keep coming in. Anonymous donates $10. We have more Taskbot. We must have more Taskbot. Thank you very much for a wonderful week. Love from Singapore. Alvenheimer donates $10. Thanks for keeping me entertained while I work night shift security. And thanks for helping me make the world a better place. Donation goes to security's choice. Well, I'll have to track him down and find out. Thank you, everyone, for your donations. I do want to point out there is actually a pretty awesome bonus incentive that I have forgot to mention. You can replace Setup Block 6 with a two-player, one-controller co-op run of Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Levels between Big John and Andrew G. That's going to be, well, <laughs> pretty crazy, honestly. Two players, one controller means both of them are going to be holding the same controller and working together to be arguably one of the hardest Mario games. That is at about 24000 out of $50,000. Not too much time left to meet this incentive, and you guys really want to see this one. So definitely think about that when you are donating. AGDQ 2017 is brought to you in part by Tokyo Attack. They specialize in bringing rare import Japanese games to conventions and events all across the country. Featuring titles such as U-Beat, Super Table Flip, Taiko no Tatsujin, and much, much more, they host America's largest collection of independently owned arcade cabinets. And they've actually helped set up a, a wonderful arcade here on location. Also set up are some pinball machines, thanks to Pinball Joe. You can go to twitch.tv slash pinball Joe uh, to check out Pinball Done Quick, side stream going on right now.
couple more donations before we get to Tom and Jerry. Love and 70 donates $220. Let's get that million happening. Let's beat our high score from SGDQ 2016. Let's kick cancer's butt. Many thanks to everyone for this wonderful event. Anonymous donates $20. Thanks for all the runners for this awesome AGDQ. And Taylor112 donates $75, says simply keep up the great work. All right, guys, we are ready with Tom and Jerry, brought to you by Red Ninja Josh. Let's throw it on over to him. Everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So this is Tom and Jerry. Uh, everybody's been asking me what I'm running here. And I say Tom and Jerry, and they go, oh, I love the NES game. So uh -oh. <laughs> as you can see, it's definitely not that. Um, obviously, I was introduced as Red Ninja Josh. Over here, I have Supersonic. I have the infamous Le Hulk. I have Hedder Riser. <laughs> Lila. Lila. Lila Vendel. And then, of course, the great Yaga, Hromp. So, um, we're going to get this going. Uh, just for fun, uh, Hulk just told me that if I don't get sub 12, he's going to unfollow me. So, yeah. We that, that's not what I said. I, I said if he doesn't get 12, sub 12, he doesn't get to sleep after this. Oh, well, <laughs> so then we're going to try to do the best we can. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to want to give you guys a countdown if that's okay. All right, sick. So let's get this uh, game on the way. Uh, three, two, one, go. Good luck, Josh. Thank you, Hulk. So the first thing I'm gonna mention is proportions in this game are extremely off. They are just so wrong. Bug size, according to Jerry, and you'll just see later in the game, it gets pretty funny. Yeah, I'm still not sure if these things are supposed to be roaches or ants or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of things in this game I haven't <laughs> really figured out. Can you show off the hovering on cheese bits? Yes, I will. Only if you explain it for me. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's yeah. You have to you have to press a down and jump and then keep down pressed. Mm. Uh, uh, that's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, you can actually jump on these cheese bits. It's completely useless, but it's a fun glitch. And for some reason, it only works on this level. <laughs> this game is really wacky. There's still some things about it that we don't really understand. And basically, the whole speedrun is fighting against the very strange uh, way that the game controls. Like it, it, this is a platformer, all right. It, it's fine most of the time, but sometimes um, you will fall off platforms. You can clip off some stuff. Uh, the, the edges of the platforms are extremely wonky, to say the least. And yeah, most of the speedrun is fighting against that. So now he's going to try a, a pretty good skip. Try. Uh, yeah, this is good, I think. Yeah, nice. It saves about 15 seconds. And of course, I'm going to say, it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> but he's right. It's really not. Just because of those edges of platforms, which can sometimes mess you up for no reason. All right. So here's another, uh, you know, it's kind of a little weird motion. It looks like an auto scroller, but it's not. You actually have to hold forward to go, uh, which is a little weird. And back to proportion size, um, gum, roaches. Yeah. And, and, the, and the movie theater chairs in the background, and the ticket that I'm writing, everything yeah. just makes tons of sense. Well, it's, it's, it makes sense to find um, popcorn and uh, gum. And gum in the movie theater, in yes. The movie theater, yeah, it kind of makes sense. 
So coming up is the first boss, uh, it's Tom. Well, all the bosses are Tom in this game. And every Tom, you have to shoot 10 marbles at, at him to defeat him. He's going to attempt to beat him in three cycles. This is going really well so far. Oh, he missed one. Uh, too bad. Uh, he, yeah. OK, just one more hit. OK. That was really close to being a three cycle, but it was pretty good so, still. Okay. Like a fast four cycle. <coughs> So another funny thing about this game, I'm mashing the buttons yeah, at the nice. end of this cutscene. Yeah, so he said nice because if you just mash A, it won't skip. Sometimes it stops. If you mash, it, you just have to mash all the face buttons because it, for some odd reason, switches them around on that yeah, one the screen. Th <laughs> the thing on that last screen after the boss, uh, he didn't have any cheese bits, so you only have two frames to mash any of the face buttons to skip it, or you will lose one second, and he did it successfully. So coming up, he's going to try to do a series of jumps, which are really difficult to do. Uh, ah, almost. So the way this game works is that you have um, you have a rebound jump. You, you can jump, and when if you tap the jump button at the right moment upon landing, you will uh, be able to get a, a higher jump, and you can chain higher jumps like that. And he was trying to do that to clear that uh, that sort of uh, going up way, th those big uh, big platforms. But it's really, really tricky to do. But still, it was a decent level, nonetheless. A uh, decent from Hulk, I'm proud. <laughs> so, uh, health management is pretty important in this game, actually. Uh, I'll let Hulk go over that. Yes, uh, okay, those uh, big cheeses will uh, recover one of your health. You, you can be hit four times and then you die. And this game, uh, the when, when you get hit, there's no knockback whatsoever. So, oh, oh. <laughs> oops. <laughs> ah, that's fine. That's it's not a big time loss. That sub 12 is going to get really hard now. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be great. So, uh, as I said, it, it's really convenient to just go through enemies because they will not knock you back. And so, so you have to know pretty much when you ha you're supposed to take hits in order to optimize uh, your level because you, only you can only do that four times. <coughs> so yeah, the, the hits that you are going to take are also routed in this game. This game is actually pretty optimized uh, at, at, at this stage. Do you want to go over why it's optimized, Hulk? <laughs> oh, why not? Why not? Well, it, it's, a, it's a game that both of us picked up independently for weird reasons, because who would speedrun this game, honestly? But uh, this is how we met on Twitch. Uh, he, I was a runner of this, and then I found out he was another runner of this, and we went over the record for this. We, we traded it back and forth a few times, and we had a lot of fun doing it. We're actually the, the only people who actually care about this game, I think. And we, we've come up with a lot of tiny optimizations, like uh, beating Tom in three, um, and three um, cycles, and this kind of stuff. So where you should, you should take hits. And how you should jump, and there are some other cool skips that are coming up in the next levels, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that. So pretty much, it was like you said, back <coughs> in the day when we both first started streaming on Twitch, um, I found a Tom and Jerry record, and I decided I wanted to go for it, and I realized uh, early on in my streaming uh, speedrunning career not to <laughs> take records from Hulk. Here he had to make sure that he had at least one heart before fighting this boss so that he could let this big magnet go over him and damage him while he could still dam constantly damage, damage the boss and be as efficient as possible. So now he cleared level world 2, so now en route to world 3, which is a Lego toy world. It's Lego, <laughs> it's the worst. In the background, look at the background, it'll give you nightmares. This, this is creepy. <laughs> and still the same music, so... But this is pretty much platform hell for me. Yeah, uh, it's it's really wacky how the the springs work. Okay, right. here he's gonna try to do a really difficult skip. It's uh, called the rocket jump or rocket skip or whatever. He can skip the waiting for the second green Lego. So let's see how he gets it. Oh! oh. He was okay. supposed to jump at the really edge of uh, that yellow Lego and try to bounce on that rocket to reach the green Lego. It's really really difficult to do. I, I believe it's either one or two frames, depending on what pixels you are, you are aligned on. And also it involves uh, trying to scre scroll the screen at the last possible moment to keep the green Lego in the correct position, or it will not work, or you will not be able to reach it. It's, it's really difficult. Uh, are you trying to go for it again? Um, uh, decisions? Yeah, I'm going to go for it again. Yeah. Because why not? That's my boy. Here he would be on the left of this first green Lego to scroll the screen as little as possible. 
Uh, that might it. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Good job. This is this is as hard as it looks. And also, as a, I'm gonna say it again, but in this game, platform edges are. Uh, They're pretty evil. <laughs> They're horrible. So when Hulk first found that skip, uh, we didn't really quite know how to get it kind of consistent. And I just kind of like lied to myself and told him that I found a consistent setup for it. <laughs> but it seems to work for me, so. Yeah, I don't believe this thing is consistent. It still relies on very precise inputs, but uh, scrolling the screen, as I said, it helps, definitely. Oh, did you go over the jumping mechanic? Uh, I talked about uh, the rebound jump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can also do that on the springs, and you, just, you will uh, bounce really, really high. Or you can do a mid-bounce or a no-bounce at all. There's three possible bounces on, on springs, and but all, all three can be useful depending on the situation. <coughs> So Hulk and I actually used to go through the whole entire bottom section of that level <laughs> until we found out you could just go above it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the game doesn't even have a ceiling, actually, so you can just go above it and save some time. I got hit by the first ball. Uh, that sometimes happens, sometimes not. I'm not sure why. But this game is inconsistent in so many ways. All right, third Tom, and this one is sort of interesting, also sort of boring. What you, what you have to do is to use these switches to make a bridge for those robots carrying bombs. You have to make them go through the whole stage, and when they get to the left, they will carry the bomb over to Tom and damage him once. And you have to do that ten times. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny, but it's actually possible to reach up there. It's really difficult jump jumping, but it's possible to reach that uh, upper Sick. section with Tom. If you Unfortunately, it does not do anything. You cannot damage Tom with marbles or anything. So there's, it just has no use. It's just for, for swag. But he has to do that ten times. It's, it's a little bit boring. So. Especially if you miss a couple <laughs> like that. <laughs> exactly. Sub-12 sub is getting really hard now, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> gone out the window. Yeah. yeah, you'll be fine. You're still in line for sub-13. Just take things. me to breakfast. I got the Lego skip, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, it's possible to get up there, but it's really difficult and absolutely completely useless. <laughs> so he beat the third, the third Tom. So now we're getting to the last world, World 4, which is by far the most interesting world, I think, in terms of uh, level design, I would say. In proportions. Yeah. Pro proportions again. Yeah, <laughs> proportions are so strange. And the plates are small, but the soul shakers are, are, are huge. <laughs> Just look at this. But... In, in, in this uh, in this world, all three levels have a different theme to them, so that's why I, I think it's uh, it's a bit better than the other ones. Other ones, all the levels look the same. Oh, yeah, I never died in that water <laughs> before. I didn't even know it was an instant kill. Yeah, th this tap water is an instant kill. <laughs> you should know that. <laughs> no, I should never get hit by the water. <laughs> yeah, I should never get hit, of course. Yeah, that's fine. You get it. So here it's actually not easy to get uh, the highest bounce out of these um, whatever those are, toasters, the toaster handles. A, a bit later, I think it's after the tap water, it's really, this jump, the jump over there is really tough. I was too busy concentrating on the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you didn't set it up. Yeah, I think you're a little bit too far to the right, yeah, go from there, nice, okay. That, that's actually really hard to get. To get it without stopping, is, is especially because you really have to use the mechanic where you rebound and get a higher jump. I know fire doesn't kill you. <coughs> yeah, fire doesn't kill you, fortunately. But water does. Yeah. But water does, yeah. <laughs> More logic, great. Yeah, which is really weird because in the next level you're gonna go in water in in a fish tank. So, <laughs> yeah, that uh, this game doesn't make a lot of sense. What is it? Jump as soon as I hit the water, right? Yeah, hit B at the same frame you hit the water, and you you, you could get glitchy mouse. It's also not a stupid glitch that doesn't do anything, but it's fun to fun to watch. Yeah, I like the idea of the springs coming out of the of the couch, <laughs> and you can use that. Beep. Ah, too bad. Didn't get glitchy mouse. So in this fish tank, you actually want to kill at least one fish with a marble because uh, you remove some lag, and also trying to to traverse the fish tank 
inside the water is so slow that it's actually better to just go uh, out of the screen, go reach the top, and then you can make a, a, a series of jumps above the water and you really move much faster. All right, this is the end of this level, and now we're, we're coming up to the last level of the game, which is by far the hardest. <coughs> You're not going to fight one tom, but three toms, and each one of them has to be uh, hit ten times, like any other ones. <laughs> yeah, that's the pause button if anybody <laughs> was curious. <laughs> Paul Strats. Can you see how he does that? Tom would, will reach his hand and then his head at the end. The, the hand at and the head have a different timer, so you you really have to know exactly how this works. Uh, every time uh, Tom pops up, pops uh, his head, he will pop his hand at a different moment every time. So I, I think I, I believe there's like three or four different cycles that uh, go that, that loop around. Awful. And every time he kills Tom, he gets a key, and those keys. Uh, unlock a rocket part, and he would do all. Wh what he's gonna do, I believe, is collect all three keys and then unlock all the three rocket parts as he goes down the level. You believe like something might happen? <laughs> well, I, I say I believe because you know of, of the strat where you can unlock the the rocket parts while fighting Tom. I'm not that <laughs> cool. Yeah, that that that's like the task strat. It's really hard to do. Well, it's really hard to do and save time. Okay, there you go. Second key. You see that there's these uh, padlocks on the on the on the right. He, he's gonna go to all the three pi padlocks as he's going down the level because this is a level where you have to go up, fight all toms, and then finally go down. You could also unlock all the all the parts uh, one by one as you get going, but it's uh, slower that way. It's faster to just kill all three toms and then go down. So he's about to kill the last one. Good. All right, good job. And now he's going to unlock all the rocket parts. And here there's another really terrible mechanic about this game. You can die if you fall from too high. So he has to make sure that he constantly uh, uh, falls on something which is uh, within reach. And time is coming up. And time. <laughs> well, you made the estimate. That's good. <laughs> you made the estimate. I made the estimate. That is good. <laughs> <laughs> that is very good. Thanks. So that's uh, Tom and Jerry. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to the tech crew. They work really hard and they make sure that the runner is very comfortable on uh, the stream with that, sound. That is, that is true. And um, they do a good job. And, you know, this is my second GDQ and coming here and meeting more people and making more friends makes these events really difficult because I'm staying up all the time watching these runs, but I want to appreciate <laughs> everybody here that supported me and is in the audience. And I just love the community and I love all you guys, so just let's do this. <laughs> and we've got, of course, TMR coming up to finish off what I call the cartoon block. So we're gonna do this and thank you. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you so much, Red Ninja Josh. It's also my first GDQ, and as a runner, I will echo his sentiments. The tech crew does 